I've mounted this sycamore blank onto a faceplate using my uh, mounting jig that I made in my last video. That's then going onto the lathe spindle. It's a big blank, it's a 14 inch um, sycamore blank. Here I've got my half inch bowl gouge, that's got a, a 45 degree bevel on that and a fingernail grind and I'm just taking the corner off, I'm starting the shaping process. The more stock you remove the more it will run true. I'm just starting the shaping, just stock removal really. Make sure that you um, stop the lathe when you move the tool rest and move the tool rest in as the uh, blank decreases in size so you don't have too much of a gap between the tool rest and the blank. I was getting a little bit too much wobble here so I've moved the tool rest round uh, so it's perpendicular to the flat face of the blank and I'm taking a truing cut along the outer edge of the blank just to true it up so I can run the lathe a little bit faster. Sometimes if you start getting a, a bit of a wobble on your cut, uh, speeding up the lathe actually gets rid of this, but also putting more downward pressure onto the tool rest can help. Um, you know, they put a bit of downward pressure onto the tool rest and sometimes it'll just uh, stop your tools starting to wobble. This is a very dry and dusty blank. It's kiln dried and uh, it was blunting my bowl gouge quite quickly. I did have to resharpen a few times. Um, Sycamore is not usually renowned for blunting tools this quick. Uh, but yeah, certainly uh, you keep on top of your tool sharpening. You know, if you've got blunt tools, you're not going to cut effectively. I'm doing a combination of push cuts and uh, a few pull cuts and some um, shearing as well using uh, the closed face of the bowl gouge and the lower wing. Just getting it to basic uh, curve that I want. And I'm trying to aim for a nice smooth curve from the rim round to the base. I'm holding the handle of the bowl gouge into my body and I tend to move my whole body round as I'm doing the cut. You need to keep your foot positioning correct so you can move your whole body round. If you try and move your arms around to do the cut, uh, you're going to struggle to get a nice smooth cut and you'll lose control. But if you move your whole body with the gouge, you can get some lovely smooth cuts. Here I'm doing a few push cuts, so I'm going with the grain, so all the grain is supported, you get minimal tear out, and a nice sharp bowl gouge, and with the uh, flutes at about 45 degrees, just getting uh, some sort of nice smooth curves going here. I'll switch over at this point to do a bit, a bit more shear scraping just to uh, true up the bottom a little bit, the bottom of the bowl and to create a nice smooth curve as well. Here I'm uh, starting to just refine the uh, curve, I want it nice and, and smooth, getting rid of any ridges. 
and I'm doing shear scraping here I'm using the closed uh, face of the bowl gouge I'm using the lower flute very gentle cuts making sure you don't catch the top flute just refining the shape I'm refining the shape of the bottom of the bowl here so that when it stands on a surface it doesn't rock you want it, if anything, the very base that's touching to be slightly concave otherwise you're going to end up with a bowl that spins around or rocks around I'm just using a parting tool here to start creating the recess for the chuck jaws using my uh, Robert, Sorbet, Robert Sorby Patriot chuck with 89mm um, bowl jaws so I think it's a 90 millimetre recess I'm cutting there. Just using the parting tool to get rid of most of the wood. Just neatening up across. I'm now switching to a skew chisel, which I'm using as a negative rake scraper just to deepen up the recess get rid of any torn grain that might be there and also I'm using the uh, toe of the skew just to create a slight uh, undercut dovetail shape that will accommodate the jaws of the uh, chuck Now I'm using the Simon Hope rotary sanding system uh, just to remove any trace of tool marks and I start at 120 grit and go up to 320. I've coated the uh, blank in two coats of sanding sealer here and I'm beginning to cut the grooves for the inlay, for the milliput inlay. I'm using uh, a parting tool and the first groove is roughly two parting tools width. The second groove is a single parting tools width. And then I'm switching to a micro parting tool to put the third groove in. So the three grooves are gradually decreasing in size. But yet you have to use very sharp parting tools, go in very gently so you get a nice clean cut. You don't want any tear out, break out. You want lovely clean lines because then you'll get lovely clean lines in your milliput. I'm actually painting sanding sealer into the grooves here. This helps stop um, the milliput going into the grain each side. And it also produces a nice clean dust free surface for the milliput to stick to. I'm just using an old bristle brush and painting in each of the grooves. It's important to make sure that the bowl is well finished and well coated in sanding sealer at this point because it stops the uh, milliput dust getting into the grain when you're finishing. Here it is, this is the uh, bowl. Um, it's still on the face plate and I'm using black milliput which comes in two parts. You mix the two parts, uh, mix them thoroughly, it does take a long while, it can make your thumbs ache sometimes. Note as I haven't hollowed the bowl at this point because I want to stick it back on the lathe and I want it to run true. But there we are, this is a, a technique I've developed for mixing milliput, it's, I call it a roll and fold. Because yeah, you roll it out and then fold it in on itself and then roll it out and fold it in on itself. It's a lot less aggravation on the thumbs. You can get thumb ache uh, if you're just kneading it with your thumbs and folding it. By rolling it and folding it, it's, it's quicker and easier. But whatever works for you, really. I should point out that I would normally be wearing gloves for doing this, but I forgot. But certainly if you've got sensitive skin, you should wear gloves. Here I'm beginning to pack the black milliput into the recesses I've created. It's a fiddly job, you've got to try and do it so you don't get any voids. But just gradually work your way around, packing more and more into the voids. 
And you can see roughly I've got the three different size channels there that I'm putting it into. But it's, uh, it is a fiddly job, it does get a bit boring. But you get nice results at the end. That's all the milliput packed into the grooves. That was about two thirds of a packet that took of black milliput. I usually let the milliput set overnight. While we're waiting, have a look at this time lapse video I did of uh, the clouds in Brittany on a recent holiday. I've uh, put the bowl back onto the lathe now. Um, you're still using the face plate and I'm doing a bit of shear scraping using the lower wing of the bowl gouge just to cut the milliput back and as you do this the pattern gradually appears doing it very gently I, I want to just cut the milliput back to, till it reaches the wood I don't want to really reshape the bowl at, at all but the pattern becomes more and more well defined just turning it off occasionally just to uh, check and just doing a little bit more just about there now you can see the uh, the lines are very well defined now then doing a little bit of sanding, a bit of rotary sanding using the Simon Hope system. Uh, I took, I sanded it to um, 400, and uh, I then applied um, some Yorkshire grit. Put quite a bit of that on, and I then worked that into the bowl with the lathe spinning. I think it was spinning at about 600 RPM, uh, and you just keep working it and working it, and it produces a finer and finer polish. So you put a fair amount of that on to start with. So we're just uh, turning the lathe on, adjusting the speed a little bit, and then using the same cloth that I applied the Yorkshire grit, I'm just uh, working that across the surface of the bowl. Yorkshire grit's done its job and I'm using clean cloths now just to buff it all away. I've now removed the bowl uh, from the face plate and uh, I've put it back onto the lathe using the uh, chuck um, with the jaws in expansion mode into the recess and I'm beginning to hollow using my half inch bowl gouge. I was having quite a bit of trouble. Uh, the bowl gouge kept blunting very, very quickly. Uh, and that you'll see a bit later on that um, I s actually switched to a different bowl gouge. I, this is a half inch and I switched to the 3 eighths and the 3 eighths was absolutely fine. So whether I've got an issue with this bowl gouge, I'm not sure. But it would not hold an edge and I was constantly resharpening it. I'm gradually hollowing out the bowl and uh, as I said earlier constantly resharpening this gouge. I was having a job to get cl nice clean cuts. I'm just doing to removing as much bulk as I can. And just bit by bit and just here I'm changing to doing a bit of uh, sort of shear scraping and pull cutting just across the uh, face of the bowl there. 
uh, just to true it up so I'm not getting quite so much um, bounce on entry on the entry cut as I'm hollowing just removing a bit more bulk and it's at this point that I then switch to the 3 8 bowl gouge and I managed to uh, finish all the rest of the hollowing of the 3 8 bowl gouge without having to resharpen at all um, so I'm going to have to have a careful look at that half inch bowl gouge and see what's going on with that but here I'm doing uh, push cuts and across the bottom of the bowl I do keep checking the depth that I've hollowed to because it's quite a shallow blank and uh, I've got my special jig that I put on the, the bedways of the lathe and that just tells me how far down I've hollowed Putting these uh, milliput band inlays around the side is very simple and very effective. You get lovely clean lines running around whatever you're making, be it a bowl or a vase or a goblet. And uh, yeah, lovely, clean, crisp, sharp lines. And it's something you can do with segmented work as well if you want to define the layers. Or even if you've got a dodgy glue joint in your segmented vase. Uh, or bowl, you could actually um, create a rebate around on the glue line and fill that with milliput and uh, it creates a nice finish to the piece um, and will hide a glue line as well. I can't overemphasize the safety aspect when uh, wood turning, it is potentially dangerous. Make sure you're confident that what you're doing is not dangerous always wear a full face visor and wear a proper respirator dust mask as well yeah wood dust is not good for you it's the fine dust you can't see that does a lot of the worst damage and particularly when you're sanding things like milliput and epoxy resins and other resins it will produce very fine dust that can be very harmful so really take care of yourselves make sure you're fully protected you're welcome to leave comments on my videos uh, and I try and reply to all of them in time. Uh, I may not get to them straight away but I do try and reply to all the comments. And uh, you know I've received some lovely comments which I'm really grateful for. Thank you. This is the last few cuts with the bowl gouge. Just doing a finishing cut really on the edge of the uh, bowl and then going across the middle of the bowl just removing that last little bit of wood before I start scraping here I've changed bowl um, to a bowl rest uh, on my tool rest and I start by refining the outside edge uh, well the inside of the edge of the bowl and I'm using a heavy duty bowl scraper here which I'm angling up at times just to avoid tear out. I'm doing very light cuts and it's a, I've sharpened this and I do keep it sharp, I keep sharpening this scraper and you get nice clean cuts, lovely shavings coming off. If you're angling the scraper up so that you're getting that negative rake effect uh, make sure you do very light cuts and make sure your tool is sharp. If you get a catch like this it'll be a bad one so you need to be very careful, very gentle cuts. I always start by finishing the, out, the outer edge of the bowl because as you um, hollow it out more and shape it more, you're more likely to get vibration on the outside edge. So always start with the outside and just refine that and get it nice. As you make the bottom of the bowl slightly thinner, it might you may get a bit more vibration just on the outer rim. I'm just refining that. Got a lovely finish with that scraper. Uh, no tear out. Yeah, it was really good. When I say I'm angling the scraper up, I'm angling the handle upwards so that the cutting edge is actually angled downwards. I'd just like to make that clear. You certainly don't want to have it angled up. 
Um, it's the handle that I'm raising to lower the cutting edge. And I'm raising the handle up quite a lot here just to get rid of a tiny bit of tear out that I'd found. And here I'm starting to go across the bottom of the bowl, backwards and forwards, with the heavy duty bowl scraper. And I'm actually refining the depth of the bowl as well, uh, just re deepening it slightly just to get the thickness correct. And I'm, I'll check that periodically with my jig. The heavy duty bowl scrapers are very effective. You don't get any um, chatter or um, vibration with them, or minimal anyway. I'm power sanding the inside of the bowl. Um, the rotary uh, self-powered sanding systems are great around the edges, but towards the middle of the bowl they really uh, are not effective, so I use a power sander. And I'm just applying two coats of cellulose sanding sealer here, thinned down with um, cellulose thinners. Just making sure it's thoroughly sealed all round. Once the sanding sealer has dried, I then use my favourite Yorkshire grit and um, get that beautifully smooth and I buff away all of the Yorkshire grit. It gives a lovely finish as you can see. Nice bit of chatoyancy going on there as it rotates. And I'm then using some of Martin Saban Smith's Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. Uh, and that's great, it brings it up beautifully. So I'm just working that into the wood with the lathe stationery. And uh, once that's well worked in and dried a bit, I'm then buffing it with a nice clean bit of cloth and giving it a good final buff. And it comes up very shiny, lovely finish. Here's the finished bowl. It's a shallow bowl, almost a platter. But, uh, 14 inch sycamore black milliput pinstripe and round the side, round the edge. Very pleased with that, how that's come out. Really this was a demonstration with milliput to show sometimes less is more. You know, you don't have to have complicated designs. Simple bands I think are very effective and it just provides a nice highlight for the edge of that bowl. Just sets it off nicely. It's a fairly plain bowl. But it just adds something to the uh, to the edge. Hope you like it. Thank you very much to all my subscribers. Please uh, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. We've got more videos coming. But there we are. I shall see you all soon.